14 and 2 over that 16 game stretch and he's put his name in consideration for being conference player of the year what a scene and a huge game tonight here in Spokane Gonzaga and St. Mary's we are underway and it'll be the Zags who have the ball first Gonzaga would like to play a little more up tempo Gales want to grind the game down Graham E.K., who's been on a scoring surge, matched up against Mitchell Saxon and hits his first shot of the night. A great decision to go to him early. Remember the second half, they started the second half, getting the ball to him and allowing him to start to dominate the paint. And when they did that, it opened up their entire offense. We saw the starting lineup for St. Mary's. Lots of experience on the Gale side. Lots of size, strength. It's a physical team, great rebounding team. It's one of the best rebounding teams in the country by every single measure that you could look at. Saxon drives, got knocked down, no whistle. Here comes Gonzaga. Nemhard blows right by Mahaney, and he draws the foul. That's the one thing you could ill afford to do. Gonzaga's going to look to run on makes, on steals, on misses. Uh, they are looking to get out in transition at all time. And if you don't get back, Ryan Demhard, number zero there in the starting lineup for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. He is outstanding at pushing the ball up the floor and trying to drive and get to your body and get to the free throw line. We show those starters on both sides, Sean. And we'll see those five players on each side a lot tonight. These teams are not relying on the bench very much. No, the amount of minutes, the raw number of minutes that these starters are playing, they rank in the top 60 nationally. St. Mary's ranks in the top 15 nationally as far as minutes played by starters on the season. So the first three points of the game for Gonzaga. Mahaney, double team, trying to get through it. And finally does find Dukas for three, in and out, no good. The press caused problems for St. Mary's on this floor a year ago when college game day was here, and Jay Billis and Dan Schulman were on the call. They went to that press, and the Gales turned it over, and that allowed Gonzaga to create separation. Hitman to EK. We saw that on Tuesday night. We see it again here Saturday night. Five of the game for Gonzaga. Marcellonis, Mahaney in the corner. That three no good. Duke is crashing the offensive boards. Extra pass. Marcellonis gave up the jumper to get inside, and he misses. But St. Mary's is going to grab another loose ball. We talk about the Gales. They rank fifth in the nation in offensive rebounding per percentage. They do a great job crashing the get glass, but a good job defensively to not give up any points. Yeah. You've got to be able to convert. You get three offensive rebounds on one possession. You've got to knock down one of those shots. St. Mary still has not scored. Well, Ryan Denhard. Ben Gregg, who likes to shoot the three. I don't know about that one. Came up way short. State. You got me. Again, Marcellonis with the drive. Flipped it up. Saxon gets fouled. Watson was underneath him. Well, that's going to be a foul against Anton Watson. Dave, I want to go back to a possession that you mentioned. We saw this on Tuesday night. They love to get Hickman into the center of that paint at that logo and force that last line of the defense to make a decision. Do you step to Hickman or do you get or do you backtrack and try to take Graham E.K. out of the play and then Hickman goes all the way for the layup? He reads that play really well. And when you get caught in no man's land, he's going to throw it up and E.K. is going to be able to finish. Jefferson with the drive. Again, no good. St. Mary's 0 for 7 from the field to start this game. One of the must-haves that Randy Bennett talked about at shoot-around is you've got to have some composure. They need that composure right now because this start is a nightmare start for the Gales. Again, that pressure just taking a little extra time. Abe Mahaney, who's really not been shooting the ball as well lately with the left hand. And again, they're going to call a foul against Gonzaga, trying to box out Saxon. This time it'll be against Nemhart. Uh, Mark Few, two times to the final four, two times to the national championship. Mitchell Saxon's going to shoot free throws, and then the Gales will keep the ball. Yep. So, I mean, that was a quick and easy look. Saxon will get to the free throw line. On the season, 62%. No 
Mount St. Mary still hasn't scored. 0 for 8 from the field and now 0 for 1 at the free throw line. And finally, the first point for St. Mary's five time West Coast Conference Coach of the Year, four regular season, three tournament titles, even going up year after year against the powerful Zags program. The two greatest coaches in the history of this conference again tonight are going head to head. With, with Duke Carolina, who did you equate to earlier today when we were talking? Yeah, it was Coach K and Dean Smith or Coach K and Roy Williams. That's what this is in this league, no doubt. I mean, what these two men have done for their respective programs. The St. Mary started from the bottom. And they've challenged their way all the way up. Good job by the Gales driving that time Marshall Onis. I tell you, one of the things that they've done a good job of early here is drawing some fouls. And that level of aggressiveness has put three fouls already on Gonzaga. And if they can get to the free throw line and manufacture points by driving, it also softens up the defense as far as level of intensity. But to your point, I mean, St. Mary's... In the 2000 2001 season, when I was assistant at Pepperdine, they, they were bottom of the barrel in this conference. And then Randy Bennett took over, and the, the slow step forward every single year, the progression to then becoming a challenger, a legitimate challenger to the Gonzaga Bulldogs to make this robbery what it is, because the Zags have been doing this since 1999. EK against Saxon. DK was just looking to drive, came up short, and a nice defensive rebound by just by uh, Joshua Jefferson, rather. That's an error pass. You got to limit your turnovers. Got to value the possession of the basketball on the road even that much more. It's usually a real strength at St. Mary's, limiting turnovers. They get extra shots on you by not turning it over. They get extra shots by offensive rebounding the way they do. Shot clock winding down. Hickman will shoot the three with a hand in his face. No good. And then a foul against Ben Gregg. Duke has boxed him out. And Gregg reached over the top. A lot of fouls. Physical start. He's from any conference that's played at least three seasons together over that same stretch. It, it, it has been a phenomenal run for these two programs and how elite they have been. Now the Zags have got the better of the Gales. But if you look and see how the other teams in the country have fared, Against his ex, nobody's fared better than the Gibbs. St. Mary's still looking for their first made shot from the field, and they're only down five, which is pretty remarkable. Well, and big news Ben Gregg with two personal fouls goes to the bench. Now you got Dusty Stromer guarding Augustus Marshallonis. Double team came on Saxon, and Nemar got his hand on the pass. Tell me that wasn't scouting report defense. Now they worked on that, and Brian Michaels is going to say, hey guys, when we leave, our hands have to be up. And Nemhard did a great job defensively and almost came up with the big shot. Offensive rebound for Watson, and then he lays it in. Again, St. Mary's, at some point, they are going to have to make some shots from the floor. Good point, Dave. They don't call you the best play by play man in the business for nothing. <laughs> oh, for eight. And against Watson. Watson already has a foul. Marcellona shoots the three. No good. Zags, for nine. Zags have really done a great job dictating the type of shots that St. Mary's has gotten. DK. Goes to work in Saxon. That's a dumb foul right there by Mitchell Saxon, who's had some foul issues against Gonzaga in previous meetings. I mean, that is just a, you're in good position, and you get a little bit lazy, and you have a mental breakdown, and you just forget what you're supposed to do, and you reach and lunge from behind. That is an easy call, and it puts you to the bench. And he, yeah, he comes out, and I think Randy Ben is probably telling him, maybe an abbreviated version, exactly what you just said. Did I speak too long there for you? No, well, not for me, but okay. I think Randy didn't have that much time over there. Uh, Harry Wessels is in, and he can go right around him and scores. Wessels has got to stay down. 
and not an elite shot blocker. He'll just stay down and wall up. He's the biggest guy out here. What a start for Gonzaga. Hey, we talked about this the other night. They started playing like they were playing against LMU. That was the first time you and I really saw them play with joy and freedom. They've been able to carry that over at least early here this evening. Shot clock down to five. Archelonis went right by Stromer, dishes to Jefferson, who scores with a foul. So there's your first basket for St. Mary's, and it's a chance for a three-point play. Yeah, Graham E.K. at the other end of the floor. Watch this. And just playing so well as of late, 20 points or more in four out of the last five games. And then at the other end of the floor, Stromer gets beat on the drive, and then the help side late rotation fouls. I think he's better served by just letting that one go because Jefferson was already up into his shot motion. And it gives him a three-point play. Randy Bennett just called big Wessels over to the bench, and I read his lips. He said, stay down. He did. That's what I said. I know. <laughs> giving you credit. EK, every once in a while, he'll shoot one from out there. I think. But that's one St. Mary's will give up. So that if they can bait him into taking those shots, even though he's proven he can make that shot every now and then, that, that's a lower percentage shot than a post-up for E.K. Good hustle by Wessels, but E.K. is in there, and he rips the ball away. And do they call it jump ball? I can't see. The cheerleaders in the student section are blocked. We are totally, <laughs> completely walled off from what just happened. Great hustle, though, and a little, it's a poor pass angle there. Really difficult to drop that pass in and allow it to be successful. They called the jump ball before it was ripped away. I think the Gales were fortunate on that one. Aiden Mahaney needs to get going. He has been in a cold streak as of late, and he needs to find his shot, and that one wasn't close. Not close. Okay, he's just 2 of 16 from beyond the arc for the last three games, and he's one of the better shooters in the conference. And for the Gales to win on the road, it's not that you have to do something superhuman, right? And I think when Randy talked about composure earlier today, what he's talking about is just do your job. Just do what you do every single game, and you give yourself a chance to find a way to win on the road. And for Mahaney, part of that job, Hickman rolls it in with a foul. What a shot by Nolan Hickman. Well, what a scene frenzied here inside the kennel Dave Fleming Sean Farnham great to have you with us those of you joining us After watching Tennessee come up with a great win on the road in Lexington A terrific day of college hoops and we finish it off here with the best rivalry in this sport out west St. Mary's and Gonzaga top two teams in the league and the Gales are the team coming into this game undefeated in conference play St. Mary's 8-0 Gonzaga 7-1 but the early story, Sean, the defense of Gonzaga has been suffocated. And it's been outstanding. St. Mary's just one of 11 from the field so far. And they've had even opportunities where they've got second, third chances because of offensive rebounds. But every shot has been a contested shot. The positioning defensively by Gonzaga has been elite. One of 11. And as you astutely pointed out when we were on ESPNU, you have to make shots to win basketball games. It was one of my better points this year, I thought. Josh Jefferson hits the jumper, and he's the guy who started to get it going a little bit. He's made both their shots so far in this game. Well, Stromer could not save the ball in bounds. That's a transition turnover for Gonzaga. They missed Jefferson in his spot up in the corner there. I, I think he's a matchup issue, and I think you've got to start playing with him and allow Mahaney to find his rhythm organically because Mahaney's been struggling over the last three games. This has got to be a shot for Jefferson. Yeah, that's a mismatch. He didn't get it to go, though. He was looking for a call. That's a travel. That was. Anton Watson got away with one, and now they call Jefferson for the reach-in. So that'll take us to a timeout. Best rivalry out west. So many classic games between these two. Great scene. Rivalry between two coaches and two programs that 
are not afraid to compete, have gone to NCAA tournaments, have won games. You know, the Gales have won games. The Zags obviously well noted for the games they've won, appearing in two national championships in 2017 and, and 2021. Off the inbound, Anton Watson missed the shot. Jefferson rebound. The Gales have got to be able just to breathe and try to find a good look. Jefferson has been the only one that's gotten really clean looks early in this game. Saxon back to end the game after sitting on the bench early. They got a good switch on him. He's just got to go up with it. He does, and he scores. They got the mismatch. They got the switch. EK was out guarding Marshall Otis. You've got to give it to Mitchell Saxon early. He cannot put the ball on the floor. He's got to just turn and go straight up like he did on that possession. Stromer down the lane. Dusty Stromer shot rejected. St. Mary's could not save it in bounds. Wow, what a block. Good rotation. The young freshman drives in the paint. I mean, Luke Barrett's not the guy you'd sort of peg to come up with that kind of he's an all-effort guy though and I like the fact that he's in the game right now because St. Mary's has been pretty flat and Barrett is a guy that can provide some energy and a little bit of toughness nice runner Anton Watson so good at those kind of shots and St. Mary's still only three of 14 some ways lucky they're only down seven they're extremely lucky they're only down seven you just got to take it one possession at a time and they got a good switch again I go right back to Mitchell Saxon. He had Dusty Stromer on him Anton Watson's trying to communicate with him and there's no communication that left that three Mahaney corner buries it and that, You know Anton Watson is, is threw his hands up because he told Dusty Stromer get away go get there and Stromer ignored him you, it, or Either that or didn't hear him. I would listen to Anton Watson personally Watson wasn't expecting to pass Tries to save it in bounds, couldn't do it. So that's a Gonzaga turnover. St. Mary's gets the ball back. And that last possession defensively. He, he, Anton Watson is pointing, go get him, go get him, go get him. Stromer was guarding nobody. And quick ball reversal, and Aiden Mahaney makes the first three of the game. The teams were combined 0 for 9 from deep until that three. And now it's a four point game. Can you weather the storm early if you're St. Mary's and all of a sudden build some confidence? Last couple of possessions have looked better. Marcellonis has had a quiet start considering how well he's been playing. Barrett had an open three, didn't take it, decided to drive. Now the shot clock down to three, down to two. Mahaney. Offensive rebound, Jefferson. Couldn't go back up with it, so he finds Mahaney who hits this one. <laughs> That is what they do. I mean, it, it, they wear on you because they're such an elite rebounding team. Top five in the country in offensive rebounding percentage. That's their fifth offensive rebound of the game. Now, Great big time rebound by Jefferson. Now the steal. Marshallonis goes coast to coast, lays it in, and somehow St. Mary's leads this game. Blocking foul against Mahaney. The Gales don't score in transition a lot. Uh, but Hickman just lost the ball, and Marshallonis picks it up. They started the season, I think St. Mary's, and Randy Bennett told us, he goes, hey, we, we want to play a little bit quicker. We want to play a little bit quicker. And as the season has progressed, they haven't played any quicker. They've actually <laughs> slowed it right back down. And, and, and that's also in, in, in step with when this team started to play better over the last 16 games. Kind of getting back to what they've always done well. Now, Mahaney, that was his second foul. So Jordan Ross, who has not played many minutes, young player, freshman, is in the game for Mahaney. E.K. elevates, misses. Ross immediately grabs the rebound. Big minutes for a freshman that was for a long portion of his career in high school out of Arizona Compass Prep. A top 100 recruit, according to Paul Bean Party. Zagas so far doing a good job of cutting off those drives from Marshall Onis. Trying to find Saxon. Nice catch. Saxon got blocked. I thought that was an automatic two. Now Watson with the quick spin. Ball screen action has caused some problems as St. Mary's goes to a drop coverage. Saxon isn't really getting back, and it's allowing EK to get the position he wants. Nemhard just kept going. 
tough finish by Ryan Nemhart. Barrett drives against Stromer and just kind of plug it up. No good. Poked away. Ross dives on the floor. And they're going to call a foul on Hickman, I believe. I think they are. Well, Nolan Hickman, we talked about him off the top of the broadcast, playing some of his best basketball in the last seven games. Basketball fan finishing off your night watching this game, wondering how good really is the WCC. BYU leaves the league. They never won a WCC championship. They leave the league, and now they're in the top 25, beating Big 12 teams on the road. Yeah, very impressive. And I think it's a good point, and it's the point that we talked about earlier in this game with these two coaches and how they've elevated these programs. And Mark Fuse has been doing it for a long time, looking to go to 25 consecutive NCAA tournaments this year. Randy Bennett, year after year, has had the Gales in consideration in the postseason. How about that shot by Ross? Oh, Jordan Ross has come off the bench again, a kid who's just not playing very much, and he looks ready to go. Speaking of not playing very much, Luka Krinovich is in for the Zags. Just got healthy, broke his hand, and missed a lot of time. Then Craig back in with two fouls, buries the three. Yeah, he, he's been so important. When they took Dusty Stromer out of the starting lineup and put Ben Gregg in, he's been the second leading rebounder on the team since that moment, and he has done such a great job of adding a little bit of toughness and a little bit better consistency from beyond the arc than what Stromer was bringing. It also takes pressure off of Dusty and allows him to be maybe more comfortable off the bench. How about Ross? No hesitation. Confident, open three, but missed it. And here come the Zags wanting to run. Nemhard got cut off and a call foul against St. Mary's. Hmm. I thought Nemhard was a little bit out of control as he went up the floor there and just left his feet. Sometimes you can speed them hard up and at times when he's had turnover issues. He's made plays like this I mean just Leaving his feet Really not driving to the basket just driving to really no man's land on that play and Whatever you think about the call he did get bailed out there for sure He didn't have a real good place to go what I would focus on more if you're a Gonzaga fan is when them has been successful He has turned in transition and attacked the paint. He has not attacked the line between the paint and the three-point line and just kind of gone into that gap he, he is drawn to the paint and brought that defense in and been able to find players on the outside Dukas and Mahaney back in for St. Mary's Anton Watson working against Jefferson. That's a really good matchup Greg got a hand on the rebound and Watson throws it down but The dunk is great But the better play was by number 33 Ben Greg the effort to get his hand on that ball Clock at three and two. High arcing three, no good. And Greg, another rebound for Ben Greg. Nemhard stepped through, missed it, tipped up by Greg, no good. And finally, Dukas rips the ball away. Man, Ben Greg is out there playing hard. That's his role. And every game just makes something happen, and he has done that. Over the top to Saxon, who was alone under the basket but was stumbling, so he gave it up. At times, his base is too narrow. It was there. Lucky that he was able to gather himself without traveling. First shot from the field. Second, rather, for Marcellonis. Back to a one-point lead for Gonzaga. His dad was a great player, and Augustus Marcellonis is turning into a great player in his own right. But he let Nemar go right by. Fucking and a foul. And that's going to be Marcellonis' second personal foul. So you got Mahaney with two, Marshall Lotus with two. But this is when Nemhard is at his best. Read a screen, find a seam, late rotations. One of the things that St. Mary's usually does a good job of defensively is showing in gaps and not allowing a lane to create like that. That seam actually started 
as soon as he came off the screen because Mahaney didn't pinch in and show that created that gap and then put Mitchell Saxon in a bad situation on the back line. So Marshall Onis has to come out of the game. We'll see for how long. Randy Bennett very willing typically to play players in foul trouble. Emhart completes the three point play. And once again, young Jordan Ross back out there in a big game. Through the pressure and doesn't go over that midcourt line. I like the little aggressiveness that he's playing. I mean, yeah. he, he doesn't look like a guy that hasn't played a lot of minutes lately and hasn't been asked to do a whole lot. Braden Huff in the game. Mahaney goes right by him, switch to the left hand. Saxon puts it in. Mitchell Saxon is the sixth best offensive rebounder in all of college basketball. Averages over four offensive rebounds per contest. He has three already in this game. And Mahaney, give Mahaney some credit there for the aggressive move to set up that board. Nice touch pass. Huff scores. it down again with the left hand so Saxon coming to life here I think one of the biggest keys in this game is Mitchell Saxon staying on the floor and avoiding foul trouble he picked up one and Randy Bennett brought him off the floor talked to him a little bit he's been much more effective since he's come back on the court Nemhard pull up good just stop and let the defense go by he has really settled into this offense took a little bit of time that's a dangerous pass Dukas then found Jefferson. Mahaney, open three. That's his third of the first half. And for a young man that had been 2 of 16 over the last three games, just 12 percent. He's one of the best shooters in the West Coast Conference. He's showing up right now. They were not, they could be in this game if Mahaney doesn't show up and compete tonight. Wow, Nemhard behind the back. Ross then actually stripped it. It went off of Ross and out of bounds. Timeout on the floor. Environment of college back. Wanted to be close to Fleming. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a whole system about how you get the positioning. They send out a tense. They send out like a text alert. And they hit, give hints as they're kind of going along. And then all of a sudden, the people that run it go out and they say, we're here. And you got to run there. And it is a sprint across campus. So, like, he's five. I said, what was your Get into different locations and just try to be close enough that they can get there. Nemhard, tough shot again, right? Nemhard, how well is he playing? Five of seven from the floor, 12 points here in the first half for Ryan Nemhard, the transfer from Creighton. We talked about Harrison Ingram, his first time playing in the rivalry game between Duke and Carolina. And this is Ryan Nemhard's first time playing in the rivalry game between St. Mary's. And Gonzaga. Saxon against Ike with the left hand. Too deep a position. Graham Ike's got to force him off the block and catch it a little bit further out or up the line. Nolan Hickman flipped it up. No good. Ball tipped around Jefferson. Marshallona's back in the game with his two fouls. A nice move on EK. His confidence level and where he's grown this year, in particular coming off the bounce and being able to find a rhythm into his shot, I think that's his biggest area of growth. That was good defense there by Saxon without fouling. So St. Mary's just about a minute to go. Somehow, some way, they have the ball with a one point lead. And they've been able to weather some foul trouble as Mahaney or Marshall Lomas. Ross has played some really big minutes here in the first half. Jefferson again going to work. Very patient. Came up short, though. And the Zags have the ball. Rare, rare time that 
the Gales haven't aggressively attacked the offensive glass, and they would have had an offensive rebound there because the Gonzaga didn't corral it cleanly. But I think part of that's because the Zags have had so much success playing ahead of the defense. And a 17-second difference. Hickman runner, good. Soft touch. Zags back in front. Final shot here. I'd like to see Mitchell Saxon get his hands on the ball after a screen and a dive to the paint. Here comes the screen. Good communication by Ben Gregg to switch out of it. Ross gets a shot up. No good. And the buzzer sounds. What a half in Spokane. What would you expect? I mean, look, Gonzaga got out early. And they had a lead of nine. 14 to 5 and then the six minutes of the game and yet we start the second half with just a one-point Gonzaga lead So here we go huge game in this conference if the Gales could find a way to win they'd have a two-game lead And already have swept Santa Clara Already won it won San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah, I mean it would really open things up for the Gales with a win, but good job by Hickman to get downhill. I said they needed to get him going in opening possession. Nolan Hickman comes off that left to right and looks to drive an attack. So now St. Mary's has it for the first time in the second half. Alex Dukas didn't score in the first half. Jefferson went baseline and scores with the left hand. So easy, it's just a straight line, baseline drive, gather and go up. You said it, one difference for Gonzaga this year. And there's no Brandon Clark, there's no Chet Holmgren. The shot blocking around the rim is not there. Anton Watson, who's got the ball here, is a great defensive player. Makes a spin move, and he got fouled. Let's go look back on that first possession. Hickman, just two or four shooting, hadn't really gotten engaged in the game. I promise you we're going to try to show it. <laughs> and maybe the biggest part of that was only four shot attempts in the yeah. first half. For a guy, you know, one of the things, that's just a composure of understanding, like, don't force it, right? Like, that's always been a staple here for the Gonzaga Bulldogs is not forcing the shots. First of two for Watson, who of all the great things he does, not a great free throw shooter, but he made them both. That allows him to get in the press. St. Mary's, when they get stops, much easier for them to get the ball and initiate their offense because the Zags are dropping into that press on made field goals. Good cut. What a pass by Dukas and a great cut for the easy layup. So now Jefferson, first St. Mary's player, is a double figures. He's got 11. Ben Gregg, catch and shoot three. No good. E.K. grabs the rebound and they'll call a foul. Now who is that foul on? They call it on Mitchell Saxon. Let's go back to the previous possession, though, Dave. The movement off ball. There's the screen and poor communication. Jefferson able to finish. We took you into another dimension. <laughs> How cool is that? There's nothing that we can't do in the truck. That was on Saxon, his second personal foul. Watson elevates, missed it, though. Great look, just didn't score. Both these teams pretty similar as far as shot blockers go around the rim. Saxon's tall and long, but not an elite level shot blocker. They wall up defensively. Jefferson right now, he's kind of acting like a bully. Like he knows he can get close to the basket, scores. Another one. That is six points to start the second half. For Jefferson. He has scored every single point here in the second half for the Gales. Hickman with the left hand, no. And Jefferson's also grabbing just about every rebound. Mahaney gets it back from Dukas. It's 
spin move from Saxon. EK, good defense. Yeah, just he opens his shoulders too much there. He just needs to go up with one hand. He turns with two, but opens his shoulders too wide. EK, quick start, mostly quiet since then. Greg, offensive rebound, and puts it back. He had great activity in the first half, and second half again, getting on the offensive rebound, manufacturing points. This team changed, you said it, this team changed when he entered the starting lineup. Grew up just idolizing this program. Grew up in this area before he moved to Oregon. A Haney, tough shot. How much fun is this? I mean, we thought this game could be really good, and it has had no separation for the late stages of the first half now to the start of the second half. These are two good teams. Joe Lenardi, Brad Vitale, to talk about where teams are at. Both these teams are NCAA tournament teams. They're going to call a foul on the floor against Marshall Onis. So that's his third. That's a big whistle. Marshall Onis, he, he's complaining and saying, hey, Nemhard's using his elbow and pushing off on me. But either way, you've got to be smart now. You've got three personal fouls. Such an important player for the Gales. Nemhard shoots the three. Good! having only the second three for Gonzaga Saxon against Watson and no good fade away instead of going towards the bucket Nemar finds the trailer now goes baseline Watson wrap around to EK who kind of fumbled it. Here's Hickman three. In and out. EK, what a rebound. Had it poked away, but they call a foul. Back and forth. This game has gone, Dave. Ryan Nemhard. A lot of Fordham's on there. That's a fact. <laughs> the computer <laughs> sort of overloaded. <laughs> like, enough of the Farnham's. <laughs> Same thing you say every week when we're working together. Enough yeah. of you Farnham's. I know, but it was a great night. And I tell you, it's the thing that people don't understand unless you've been up here before. Is just how important this program is to this community. And just how important this community is to this program. I mean, this is a small corner of eastern Washington. They have sold out every single game that has ever been played in this building. Doesn't matter if the students are in session or not. They rarely lose here. Their success is elite. That's so why players want to play here. Yeah. You become a part of the community, not just while you're a player, but forever. Some of them come back and live here. Even if they weren't from here, they stay here and they live here and raise their families here. It's really unique. Special place in college basketball. Saxon fell down. Well, Saxon. Not been a, as effective here, and Nemard goes coast to coast, missed it. And now the Gales, maybe a rare chance for St. Mary's to run. Mahaney trailing three, good! How about that for execution? Mahaney just cool, calm, and collected. That's the Aiden Mahaney we saw so many times last year as a freshman. EK on this end. He gets into double figures now. Ben. And these two teams, they, they execute so well offensively. Both coaches know exactly the matchups that they want to try to exploit. The key is just getting there as frequently as you can. And good job switching out of that role. I mean, Anton Watson drop off of Marshall Onis. Marshall Onis, the spin move, got it to go. They didn't call the travel. He sort of fell off balance. We're going to go right back to EK at this end. Yeah. Came up way short, and then Watson ripped it away. They'll call a foul, though, on a reach-in. Well, Jefferson had interior pos position there 
for an offensive rebound, but as he was trying to box out, he never identified where the ball was. So they're going to call that a shooting foul for Anton Watson. Hmm. That's three on Mahaney. Yeah. Three on Saxon. Three on Marshall Onis, and we got 13 minutes left to go. Women's basketball triple header for you on Sunday on ESPN2 in the app. Virginia Tech Carolina ranked game in the ACC. Number one South Carolina, the only undefeated team left hosting Ole Miss. And then in the Pac-12, number seven UCLA, number four Stanford, four Eastern tomorrow Sunday on ESPN2. How about Virginia Tech's Elizabeth Kitley? ACC player of the year, back-to-back -back year. She just became the fifth ACC player to score over 2,500 points in her career. You'll see her in that first matchup against North Carolina. And that is number 17 versus number 24. Jefferson lost it. Gonzaga two-point lead with the ball. Hickman slipped, got his balance. Watson fighting again to try to grab the rebound. Jefferson looks a little winded right now. He does. He does. I don't know that he's come out of the game yet tonight. Marshallona they left him open, kind of dared him to shoot the shot, and E.K. nods his head. He knew he committed the foul. Sean just mentioned it, but Randy Bennett and St. Mary's tra now trying to manage foul trouble for the not, final 12:46. Not a deep team. 11th most minutes played by a starting group in all of college basketball this season. And they did not go to their bench. They did not look for their bench to add a lot as far as production goes. Anton Watson commits his second personal. Neither team very deep, but right now it's the Gales who have more of those issues with their top players in foul trouble. Catch and shoot three Mahaney. Not this time. Watson, though, could not save it. I was arguing that he got pushed. His foot ended up out of bounds. St. Mary's with 20 on the shot clock will keep the ball. Alex Dukas is not in foul trouble, but he is on the bench, and he's got zero points. He had scored in double figures for the first time all season long in three consecutive games. He's been a guy that's been around for a long time and made some big shots. With these other guys in foul trouble, he's going to have to step up in the final 12 minutes when he gets back out there. Wessels in for Saxon. Marshallonis attacks on Ike, scooped it up. Rebound Greg. Nemhart just racing into the front court. He is so quick. Got to bring the double here. It came a little late. Hickman off the pass out. Too strong. Long rebound. Greg slams into the bleachers right next to us. Man, that had to hurt. He got up and kept going. Both coaches talked about that today. This is a game where you're going to take some bumps. You're going to fall down. You might get hit in the face. You cannot stay down. You have to get up. Mahaney in traffic. No good. Man, they're letting the play right now. Watson again just had a good look. He's upset at himself, frustrated. Position defense. Both teams have done a good job of that. That's why neither team has shot the ball excessively well. But in the second half, in particular, Gonzaga. Well, Jefferson, they just left him wide open. Too open almost. Watson's gassed. He's trailing the play. There are a lot of players out there who could use a breather. And Ben Gray is just reaching down to his right leg. Yeah, he, remember, he, he took that fall and he was reaching down to his lower right leg. Nemhard wrapped it up, draws the foul. Must haves in a rivalry game. Effort. Are you willing to sell out? Salers. And I said, oh, well, what, what does that mean? What is she going to bring to the table? And she, her ability to play with the ball in her hands, create shots, lead the team. I mean, this is a historic performance. Most points by a Division One player versus a top ten opponent in the last 25 years, and one of the very best when you talk about the Stanford Cardinal. I mean, it's the school record. It's the school of Cheryl Miller. Yeah. Like maybe the greatest player of all time. 
I mean, just an unbelievable player. And we talk about Caitlin Clark and 38 points, 12 assists tonight for Caitlin Clark. I think she's 66 points away from passing Kelsey Plum's all-time record. But Juju Watkins might be the next one that starts to challenge that a little bit. She's a star. Three-point lead, Gonzaga, St. Mary's ball. Both teams were looking a little fatigued before that last timeout. Tough move, Aiden Mahaney with contact. Randy Pennant is asking how that's not a foul. Uh, good job by Mahaney, though, being strong and focused on finishing, not focused on getting the foul. They've really just decided to let these players play. Nemhart has come to play tonight. He's got 18 now. He attacks every closeout. Alex Duke has closed out with his hand up and opened up that side of the court, and Nemhart took it. <laughs> Jefferson almost lost. The bounds. Josh Jefferson, nice little shot fake, but then missed it. Almost uncontested. Those are shots you have to finish if you want to pull off an upset. That's a nice fight. Oh, and Grant Meekin was not happy about that, and he is saying some words that you cannot be saying to an official. Yeah. this in the screen and he stepped in I mean, it's a good call part of that though the guard has got to do a better job of dropping down lower beneath the level of the screen and then come off the screen that was the problem here Hickman was too high and it forced the step by Grand Eke. I saw what you saw Saxon and they are gonna call a foul against Watson he keeps doing the pull the chair trick against Saxon and it keeps working Mitchell Sachs has been off balance, seems like, so many times tonight. It's been his entire career. I mean, throughout the course of his career, there have pl been plenty of examples of where his base is too narrow or too wide. He he's just got to keep it strong underneath. This time, good balance and the finish off the inbound pass. Back to a one-point lead. He's a good player. It's been a one-possession game, Dave, this entire second half. And these are two teams. You have to understand. A loss here by Gonzaga puts them two games back. A win here for the Gales. I mean, they, they, they're feeling like, hey, this, this is our conference. The Zags win this game. Now, all of a sudden, from a confidence perspective, they're looking ahead going, okay, we got to go to San Francisco still, but it's more of a neutral site game at the Chase Center. We control our own destiny. Out of bounds, and it'll be St. Mary's ball. Nemhard lost it. Shot clock was all the way down to two, and Mark Few is going to use a timeout. Previously, 6, 12, 11, 8. There's zero there. Now, they got opportunities ahead. It's this one tonight. It's Kentucky at Kentucky. St. Mary's at St. Mary's. And then San Francisco at the Chase Center. But you've got to start stacking some of those wins up if you want to start being legitimized as an NCAA tournament team. If you don't. Yeah, their season comes down to a rare. You've got to win two games, three games in Las Vegas at the WCC tournament. Be a lot of pressure on Gonzaga if that's the case. Marcellona, shot clock winding down, finds Jefferson on the baseline, got to shoot it. Mahaney launches, almost hit it. Wow. What a shot. Then Saxon fighting for the loose ball. Greg on the baseline, timeout Gonzaga. Well, that leaves Gonzaga, though, with only one timeout remaining for the final eight minutes. I love the spotlight of a guy who's got, as you said, five points, has been one of the best players on the floor. It's not always all about scoring. But so little of it is actually about scoring. So much of it is about how hard you play, how you compete. What a steal by Mark Delonis. And now the lead to Mahaney, two on one. Mahaney with the left hand foul on Ike. And Ike's got to be careful. He almost got, I thought, he almost got a technical a couple minutes ago, and he just screamed at that official again. Oh, that's pretty darn clean there, partner. This goes up. I, I don't think he made a lot of contact there. This is the angle. Watch this angle. Where's the contact? 
I mean, a little bit on the follow through, but the shot was already up. Mahaney's already out of bounds. That free throw ties the game. And I love the level of aggressiveness, though, from Aiden Mahaney. You know, there's been a lot of times we've called big games for Aiden Mahaney, and he's primarily done his work on the outside, but tonight he's been much more assertive, driving the paint, being aggressive, and playing strong going to the basket. And I'm good with EK being competitive and into this game, but you just gotta, you can't go over that line. Could be the difference. Another ball that Marcellonis gets a hand on and tips out of bounds. Zags have turned it over their last three times down the court. One up, no good. Rebound St. Mary's. And that's a double double, I believe, for Jefferson now. One rebound shy. Excuse me. He's got 13 and 9. He has given all that he can. They played through him and they're doing it again. What a play by EK. Duke has tried to hit Jefferson and EK got a hand on it. Yeah, it should have been a bounce pass. It was a straight line pass that was right waist level. Easy for EK to get his hands to deflect that one away. Watson, quick move to the baseline. Gonzaga back ahead. I think you're going to be saying there's going to be Gales back in front, Zags back in front, the rest of the way. This has been a one possession contest the entire second half. Jefferson, no foul. Tough runner for Nemhard. Got knocked just enough off balance, missed a shot. Alex Dukas, who's got the ball here, still has not scored in this game. Marcellonis, no! Started to lose control of the ball. That's his fourth foul on Mitchell Saxon. You got to imagine. Talk to Mark about that. He's very much looking forward to it, having his kids over there with him. EK at the free throw line out of the timeout. Front end of the one and one. And makes it. Earns a second. We saw EK, a game where. Gonzaga was missing a lot of free throws down the stretch on this court against San Francisco and it almost cost him the game But EK made his A lot of pressure free throws in that one Mason both here Saxon still in the game with four fouls. I'm really surprised this next possession. They've got to post EK Other part of it is Saxon likes to attack the offensive glass. He's got to be careful on offensive rebounds as well. EK, he's going right to the line with these officials. And again, I, I, I don't mind it. It's an edgy game, it's a huge game. You just wouldn't want to say the wrong thing and potentially have that be the difference in the game. And for EK, that's his fourth personal. Uh, so Hoff is going to check into the game, and Hoff tonight has only played two minutes. And EK has been a centerpiece here in the second half in the attack for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. EK has played the most minutes he's played in his Gonzaga career here tonight. Off the inbound, Mahaney. This is a good matchup for Saxon, you figure, with the left hand, he scores off the glass. Smart. He engaged one time with his upper body that made contact with the chest. Did not do it a second time. Spun off of him. You know, a second time in, that's going to be an offensive foul if Huff sells it. Go, 
Hickman. Mahaney's done a really decent job defensively here tonight, too, on Nolan Hickman. Lost him that time. Hickman drives against him, missed the shot. Another rebound for Josh Jefferson. That is his 10th. Hickman just 3 of 10 shooting tonight, 0 of 3. And they got a foul on Huff. Huh. Away from the ball. Pushing Saxon away from the basket. Long way from the basket. And free throws here, 1 on 1. If Saxon can make it, we can be tied. But going back to Aiden Mahaney, you know, we talk so much about his offensive game, and, and really his, his his weakness at times has been his ability to defend. But he's done a good job fighting through screens and competing tonight. Tie game. I think oh, we've seen some spectacular from Aiden Mahaney in his young career. But I think all around this is one of the best games I've seen him play. And he's 6 of 15 shooting. Again, but you're right. Not all ways about shooting and scoring. One of two for Saxon. And everybody here in the kettle is on their feet. Everybody. Uh, this is just a spectacular environment. Okay, almost everybody. <laughs> There's a couple people. Marshall Otis almost got that steal. Shoots the three in and out almost went down the big man from outside Tie game under four minutes to go EK makes his way to the scores table Mahaney draws a contact scores what a finish by Mahaney over the length extending out with a soft touch off the glass. That reminded you of Mahaney down the stretch last year in Moraga against Gonzaga. Down low, Huff kind of fumbled it. Saxon's got those four fouls. Greg didn't shoot the three. Shot clock down to five. Hickman crossover. No good. Jefferson, good box out there of Anton Watson. This has been a fantastic game. Great game. What a what a way to end college basketball today on ESPN with all the great matchups we had between top ten teams. They may not have the rankings next to their name, but both of these teams feel like they're NCAA tournament teams. They're competing for first place. Jefferson three. What a shot from Josh Jefferson. And Mark Few uses his final timeout. St. Mary's has a five-point lead. Moment, Mickey McConnell, who hit that huge shot, what now, 13 years ago? We showed earlier with a quick word from Haney as they run back on the court. Gonzaga ball, down five. EK back on the floor with four fouls. Good defense got cut off. Taking a lot of time. Greg, three. No good. He knew he missed it. Followed his own miss. And that's going to be a goal set. The rim was grabbed. Ben Greg knew it. Crashed the boards, and he'll get credit for the two. Yeah, definitely right call by. Can they two of the three Barrett. officials come over to tell us and neither know who they called the foul against? They called it on Barrett from behind. Free throw, no good. And Mitchell Saxon tracks down the long rebound. After all that, it's just the two. That comes down to what Gonzaga did a really good job of. They've been forcing for a majority of the first half. They forced the Zags to shoot over contested shots. Second half. St. Mary's shooting 52% from the field. Jefferson has been a guy that they played through. They go away from him here. Mahaney on EK. EK did a good job, but he dumps it down to Saxon. The ball wow. almost went out of bounds, but before that, you just couldn't hear it. The whistle was blown. It is a foul, and we'll see if that's on EK. 
They called that one. I believe on Ben Gregg. Yeah, Ben Gregg. Yeah, it is really loud in here. We can't even hear the, the, the officials are so quick with it. But usually it's really easy for us to sit here yeah. to see this. All right, let's settle back in here, partner, for 136. That one wasn't close. I mean, he missed that to the side. 62% on the season for Saxon. Just two of five here tonight. Three-point game. Just continuing to attack. Ball swatted out of bounds. Wow. I thought that one was off Gonzaga. And they're going to say, yeah, St. Mary's ball. They're going to review it. They will review it. One of the biggest things they've done better defensively in the Gales here in the second half is Gonzaga's only shot 29% from the field here in the second half. It's that they've cut off the lanes for Nemhard. They have not allowed Nemhard to get a seam and attack. Pressure from Gonzaga. Here's where they're trying to try to get that switch again. They got the switch. to save it does Marshallonis three good they're gonna review it with the shot clock expiring and make sure it was a three a near turnover turns into a Marshallonis there is no technical St. Mary's lead is six with 48.5 now the game's not over but Gonzaga needs points and they need them fast uh, I'm trying to get downhill quickly here best three-point shooter is Nolan Hickman on the floor he has not gotten loose Hickman, Mahaney, more good defense by him. Anton Watson elevates for the three. Got it! Huge shot for Watson. Well, they got to handle the press here. They have timeouts. They get it up the floor. And now St. Mary's is going to hold and give it to Mahaney. And Gonzaga's not fouling him. About six seconds differential. So a made bucket would almost end it if they take the clock all the way down. Mahaney stops. Mahaney shoots. No good. And a foul on the floor against Gonzaga. And now if we had we have more stuff being yeah. thrown up. And it's not double bonus. He's two of six. You make one, the game is over. He made it! What an unreal night. Wow, the intensity of this rivalry has almost never been this high. Remember also, Gonzaga, no timeouts. This would give the Gales a two-game lead in the WCC. Obviously, you don't foul. Miss free throw. Hickman across midcourt. Hickman will heave it up. No good. Watson puts it in. Count that basket. It's not going to matter in the ultimate result. St. Mary's on the road inside the kennel. Gets a win. And more stuff coming on the court.